first, thank you so much for coming out here and being here tonight, being somebody who is interested in the work that Winston is doing, being somebody who is interested in having the conversations that will come from tonight, so thank you. Tonight I'm going to talk about anxiety. Did you know that one in three people suffer from some form of anxiety disorder? I was one of those people. It was early in the pandemic, and I became a different woman, someone I, I didn't even recognize. I was so tense all the time. I was snappish with my family. I was not able to sleep at night, which gave me that brain fog. I couldn't think. And my behaviors became erratic. I was running around with a bottle of Fantastic in one hand and an old rag in another, wiping down every surface that they touched. I had signs posted throughout the house that screamed, Stop! Wash your hands! And I insisted that my family use the basement door when they came in, strip down immediately, and put their clothes in the washing machine. They appeased these demands at first, but then they got really skilled at the art of avoiding mom. This did not do good things for our relationship, nor did the sideways glances they would give each other when I walked in the room. I wouldn't allow anybody to do any of the grocery shopping either, because they wouldn't do it right. I had a system, a system that would kill the germs. I would bring home the groceries, and they would then go into bins on the deck, and they'd have to stay there for 24 hours before they were allowed to come in the house. And the system, it worked great for about a week until the local critters discovered what I was up to. And when I saw a raccoon sauntering across my deck with a loaf of nut bread, I lost it. And I'm run out to the deck, uh, the patio, and I'm screaming like a madwoman. And I just realized, Tom, my husband, who's back here, that's probably why the neighbors didn't want to talk to us. Because I was just this crazy woman. What was going on in the world with the pandemic and the virus? That was troubling, for sure. For me, though, it was just curly tip at the end of a pile of poop. What was really driving me over the edge with my anxiety was my, my business. The business that I had built from the ground up 20 years ago. And all of a sudden, I feel like I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. All of my partners pulled out all of my funders and sponsors. I had a staff I had to pay. And I was going deeper and deeper into debt. I was so scared. What am I going to do? My business was sinking, and it was dragging me down with it. It wasn't just the loss of a paycheck either. It was the loss of my identity, my sense of purpose. I got a lot of validation from my business. I was the, had a, a company that promoted Canadian film and talent. So I got a lot of attention, a lot of validation. I was invited to all of the industry parties. I flew to film festivals around the world. I walked the red carpet. I was invited by the media to be interviewed. I sat on expert panels. I hobnobbed with the famous and almost famous. Really validated me. I loved it. I felt like I was someone, and that made me feel all sparkly inside. And I really liked being someone. And now what? Here I am, and I feel like it's all going to disappear. What am I supposed to do? I took this question to my business coach. 
And she asked me in, in response one simple question. Well, Anita, what do you typically do when you feel stressed and anxious? I go for a walk in the forest. Excellent, she says. Here's what you're going to do. For the next 30 days, you are going to go for a walk in the forest. What? I, no, I, I can't do that. I, I don't have time to do that. And in my head, I'm thinking, what kind of business coach tells her clients to go for a walk in the woods? I need business advice, not nature therapy. You'll find a way, she says. The only way I'm going to make this work is if I get up at the crack of dawn. So every morning, I'm up bright and early before my family is even stirring, and I'm walking down to Mosquito Creek Park in North Vancouver, and I'm now demanding of the universe, what am I supposed to do? Every morning. And then something interesting happens. Slowly, over these mornings, early morning walks, I start to feel calmer, happier. Not exactly happy, just happier. And I'm noticing, I'm noticing my environment. I'm noticing all the green, there's so many different shades of green. And I'm noticing the way the, the light is filtering through the leaves and the sounds of the birds chirping and the squirrels chattering. I can smell the, the heather blossoms. It's sweet. I can almost taste it. Mm. I can feel the warm sun on my face and the cool breeze in my hair. And I'm falling in love with my environment. It's soothing. So soothing. And in this space of calm. I ask the environment, the universe, the question again, what am I supposed to do? And that's when I hear it. A voice in my head whispers, what do you want to do? Now it's my voice, but it's like it's an older, wiser version of me. I don't miss a beat. What do you mean, what do I want to do? What am I supposed to do? No, Anita, the question is, what do you want to do? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you do. Well, that stumps me. Later that day, I find myself at the bookstore in the spirituality section, clearly still looking for somebody or something to tell me the answers. And I find this book, it catches my eye, it's um, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. And I pull the book off the shelf and I flip it open and this one line leaps off the page like a frog diving into a pond of insights. Frustration and anxiety come from not listening to the soul. Frustration and anxiety come from not listening to the soul. I feel something flicker in my chest. My heart starts racing. The hairs, I'm feeling it now, are raising on my arms. My body has recognized a truth before my mind has had time to catch up. I'm not listening to my soul. An awareness dawns. I have the answers I'm seeking within me. Over the following weeks, I devote myself to the study to figure out how to crack open that safe that's within me how to open that door to the answers, how to crack it open. Like a thief stilling into the night, every morning at the crack of dawn, I slip out of bed and into the forest to 
try to find those answers that are within me. So many mornings I return home. I'm frustrated and impatient, but never doubting, always believing that there is something there for me to uncover. And then I crack it. I crack the safe. My soul and the answers that lie within. And it's so simple. So incredibly simple. It's love. To be the love. To accept what is, to love what is, to be in a state of love for self, for the environment, for others, for all that is. You see, my early morning walks in nature help me find this love. First, it quieted that monkey noise that was going on in here. And then it grounded me and got me connected to my environment, which then connected me to my heart. And in that space of connection, I felt my heart expand as if it was pressing up against my rib cage, demanding, demanding more space. That's how love feels. Expansive. It's in this space of expansiveness that we hear the whispers of our soul. It is here that we find the answers that we are seeking. You don't need anybody to tell you what to do or how to do it or who to be. Have those answers. Turns out my business coach knew a thing or two. When I changed my question and asked, what do I want? I was surprised by the answers that bubbled up. I discovered that what I really wanted was to close my business. The truth is, I had lost my passion for that business years ago, but I was too afraid to let go of that old identity that I worked so hard to build. So I clung onto it, like a life raft. When I finally listened, and closed my business, new opportunities emerged. I listened some more, and my husband and I decided to get rid of most of our possessions and become nomads. That's been fun. (laughs) And I kept listening. I was guided to start a life and leadership coaching practice to guide others to tap into their soul voice so they can create a life aligned with who they really are. Because I understand now that when you listen to that voice, that's when you can create a most remarkable life. That's when you step into the best version (coughs) of you. So if you're feeling anxious in your life about anything right now or confused or uncertain about the next steps to take or your purpose, you're feeling like you need to make a change, then I invite you to take a 30-day nature challenge. Get outside every day for 30 days, 15 to 20 minutes a day. It's all you need. Get present to the here and now. Connect with your environment. And in that presence, in that stillness, love emerges. And from this place of love, you will hear the whispers of the soul.